Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We're now going to talk about a Nigerian, a 40-year-old Nigerian who was killed in South Africa on January 5th, 2021. We have his, a member of his family, his brother. His name is uh, Tunde Abudu. And also we have the head of media and communications at NIDCOM. Uh, that's the Nigerian Diaspora Commission, Abdurrahman Balogu, to discuss this issue with us. Good morning, Mr. Balogu and Mr. Abudu. Good morning to you. Okay, let's begin with Good you. Good morning. Yes, and, we can hear you. Thank Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Let's begin with you, Mr. Abudu. Tell us a bit about your brother and how you heard about the news that he had been allegedly murdered in South Africa in January. Yeah, um, good morning once again. Um, my, uh, my brother is, um, like you have rightly said, his name is Abu Du Adidayote. It's okay. He, lived, he lives in South Africa, Johannesburg. He's 40 years old. He's a graduate of um, computer science from the Lagos State Polytechnic. He's been there for three years now. He works um, with a private security company. Um, the news came to me on the 5th of January at about 7.30 Nigerian time, a friend, a friend called me to tell me, have I heard what, ha what, what, what happened? I said, no, it's not, I mean, it's not, it's not possible because I spoke to him a day before then. So I put a call through to his number. Nobody, nobody picked up. Then I persistently kept calling until a friend of his picked the call and um, he confirmed my fears that uh, my brother had been shot, he was involved in a shooting incidents and he rushed to the hospital and was confirmed dead. All right. So since that incident was confirmed, what steps did you take leading up to the petition written to NEEDCOM to get involved in seeking justice for your brother? Um, it, it was a bit, I was taken aback really because someone you had, you had just spoken to a day before and he was Healthy, lively, up and going. I we had to make sure he was buried according to Islamic rights. Being a Muslim, I got in touch with my brothers. We got in touch with a few of his friends that we had their numbers. He told us the police are taking the body. That um, they had to take um, They had to make some carry out some investigation before they release the body the next morning. We had to make sure um, where then we contacted the Muslim community that we could um, get in touch with so that um, the rituals given to a dead body could be performed on him before he was buried. He was taken to a, to an Islamic, um, Muslim, I mean, to a Muslim center somewhere in Johannesburg. I can't put my finger on the name now. And I, we watched the video where the janazah was performed on him to the time he was taken to the to the burial ground well, when he was buried. Then I kept talking to the friends, or we kept talking to the friends that witnessed the, the, witnessed the inc incidents. I must give kudos to some of his friends, to a lot of his friends that in South Africa. We came together to put the funds together to do the needful. We didn't have to spend much, but um, we had to be with them on video, on video calls and made several calls. I had to reach out to some friends that are in um, Durban, the, the Amir of the Muslim community. I can't, Remember the, the All right. Malam's name now. So we, we make sure it was buried according to Islamic right. There, there, there after we kept on making inquiries. They told us the police came, they had investigated, the corona confirmed that bullets were removed from his chest, that um, they even found cartridges at the point of I mean, two cartridges, meaning two bullets were shot from whatever gun or whatever firearms were used in carrying out the assassination. So that's the truth. That's to confirm that he um, was actually killed by those two bullets. Okay. Then All right. We we. Um, just um, can um, I continue? Sorry, uh, Tunde. Um, in the interest of time, so um, we spoke yesterday evening, um, and so great speaking with you again. I know it's a difficult time for you and your family, um, but I'm going to bring you back uh, to talk about the eyewitness reports. Um, what you know, you can hear you know from the people on ground, from his friends, uh, that you know could be the likely cause of his of his um, killing. But before that, let's bring in Abdurrahman Balogun. Uh, you would need come. Uh, Tunde, of course, had uh, uh, clarified yesterday that Nidcom had been contacted to encourage proper investigation into the death of Temi Tokpe. 
So, Mr. Balogun, good morning. Thanks for joining us once again. Good morning. All right, brilliant. So now let's just bring you in here to share um, what you know Nidcom has so far been able to do. Um, have there been any steps taken by Nidcom to en ensure that uh, the killer is found and you know justice, of course, uh, goes to the Abudu family? Well, thank you again for having me. I sincerely want to extend our condolences to the family of Abudu for this uh, sad uh, incident. Uh, we pray unto Almighty Allah to forgive the sins of the departed and the wording with Alejandra. Uh, yes, the petition came to us and uh, in line with our, with our practice, it was taken to our legal department who will look through it, the genuineness of that uh, petition, and then do the needful. And uh, in this case, immediately the petition came, the chairman CEO, uh, Nigeria Diaspora Commission, immediately revived to the legal department that they should uh, conduct uh, a thorough investigation of it and uh, report back to her. And exactly that's what was done by the head of the media and uh, legal department. The position was uh, referred to our mission in South Africa. And uh, they are on it. Part of what Mr. Tudor said has been confirmed uh, in terms of uh, that indeed, the uh, I think that you have the was shot, uh, and uh, we were told that the police are on the matter investigating. So that's where we are. Okay, so so Nidcom basically, um, um, can you clarify exactly what stage you are with the investigation? Um, the last you know conversation you had maybe with the um, um, police in South Africa. Um, and of course, when is likely to be a follow-up? We, we 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 don't deal with uh, the police in South Africa directly. We deal with our mission. Our mission deal with the police in South Africa. So it is the briefing from our mission in South Nigeria mission in South Africa that I'm giving you. It is our mission in South Africa that is dealing with authorities there. And this is not the first case. We've been having cases of uh, unprovoked uh, killing, uh, uh, mass killing of uh, Nigerians in South Africa. All right. Um, we'll come back to you, um, Tunde. Let's come. Let's uh, now bring you in um, and to share with us. You know what you've heard. What are the things that you've been able to uh, find out from eyewitness reports uh, from his friends? Uh, that might, you know, give us some clues and, uh, into what has happened. Yeah, just like I said yesterday, um, since it's a police matter, um, the high witness reports were a bit sketchy, but um, the, the two people that were seated with him where, where the incident took place gave me the incidents that related to you yesterday and earlier today, that they were seated around... 5.30, 6 p.m. Nigerian, I mean, South African time, and they heard a, a gunshot. At first, they didn't know it was a gunshot, and they all scampered. They thought it was um, maybe a um, firecracker because it was the first period, 5th of January. They all scampered for safety because the, 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 the noise was, it was uh, rather loud. Then when they, got, when they got back to their consciousness, they now asked for my brother, where is um, Dio D1, like he's fondly called, before someone told them that, look at him lying on the floor. Before they noticed that they had um, two gunshots and he was quickly rushed to the hospital before he was confirmed dead. So, so well. Okay, let's bring in our Needcom guest here, Mr. Balogo. This is not the first time we're hearing cases of assassination of Nigerians in South Africa. Can you give us an idea of how bad the statistics are 
you know, with NIDCOM, the figures we have of Nigerians that have been murdered in South Africa, and the general response, what NIDCOM has been able to do to ensure prosecution of those cases and justice for the families. Thank you very much. Prior to 2020, uh, we've recorded uh, close to 116 cases of uh, Nigerians being killed in one way or the other in South Africa. And this is excluding the xenophobic is, attacks, isn't it? You said? I said this, the figure you gave me is excluding the xenophobic attacks. These are individual murder cases, well, are they? Yes, yes. The xenophobic attack, you know, there are two, uh, two times we had uh, the xenophobic attack. But uh, the, the one of uh, 2019, the one of 2019 was uh, massive. Uh, you can recollect that uh, Nigerian government had to evacuate some of our citizens back home then in 2019. Uh, it was that bad. We have so many cases, so many cases. Just um, some maybe due to business deals. So. Oh, sadly. We'll try, try to reconnect with our guests in the next, in the next uh, few minutes that we have. But this is a very important issue, Nigerians and South Africans. It is so sad that we just, it seems that we just don't get along, you know, regarding when you, when you look at the statistics of the killings and all of that. Even though I know, like, lots of people who are married to South Africans, who, you know, they've done business together, lots of Nigerians who school in South Africa. And looking at our history from how, you know, Nigeria aided South Africa during the uh, anti-appetite well, movement and all of that. But generally, the fact that we are all one African race, you would just assume that we'll be one big happy family. Um, let me just but, quickly uh, jump in there. The okay. challenge, you know, with that narrative is until we are sure what happened to Timmy Tokwe, we can't say if it was a South African versus Nigerian issue. It could, he could have... And this might be hard for Tunde uh, to hear, but he, he, this killing could have been done by a Nigerian. No, definitely, also. definitely. Um, it could have been done by just anybody. It, it could have, have been, have. you it know, a, a mistake. It could have been, you know, so many reasons why this could have happened. Um, it has been but you don't hear of South Africans being killed in Nigeria. The stats of Nigerians being killed in South Africa is just terrible. And that's what we're trying to get Nidcom's perspective, to find out what has been justice, what, what, what has been done in this case, what is justice being done in this case? Because it's just so sad that when he mentioned about 100 Nigerians killed, I had to clarify this is definitely exempt from these xenophobic attacks. Because if you're saying just over 100 Nigerians have been killed, there's a tendency to fear and panic from my Buddhist family that I hope my brother is not just going to be one of the statistics as well. You know, Absolutely. so we do need to ask this question. And I get that point, you get... know, but, but what I'm trying to point out here is, um, yes, there's, there's been xenophobia. Yes, you know, there have been times when South Africans have attacked Nigerians, but at the same time, there is numerous other times when it has nothing to do with um, a country versus country. I hear you. Um, has nothing to do with xenophobia. Sometimes it's drug deals gone bad. Sometimes it's murder. Sometimes it's a robbery. Sometimes it's, it's just anything. Yes, the police you know? need so, to do the exactly. investigations and get so back it, to us. A, 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 you know, if we can get some clarity from the police in South Africa, uh, from the Nigerian embassy in South Africa, then it, it might help us understand better what might be going on. Um, hopefully, the the criminal justice system you know is effective enough to be able to find out what happened to Timmy Tokbe and who you know the likely killer is. Hopefully, somebody will be arrested soon and would make statements. Hopefully, you know, but, hopefully, um, he's leaving behind three children, five siblings. Yes. It's just so sad that this is happening at this time. Um, do we have our guests now, Mr. Balogu and uh, Mr. Tindabudu? Um, it's 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 a it's a it's a huge task, you know, for uh, Nidcom, huge task for the Nigerian Embassy, and um, of course a painful task for the Abudu family, sure. trying to find out what happened to their brother. Um, it, it 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 I cannot imagine the amount of pain that, of course, the family has gone through. So and sad. Of course, uh, it now makes you question, you know, how you know much representation you have from the Nigerian Embassy and from Nidcom um, at a time like this, but. 
Um, like um, Mr. Balogun has said, you know, they have started investigating. They have, you know, of course, are exchanging. Um, there's conversations between the, the Nigerian and Diaspora Commission and the Nigerian Embassy yes. and the South African justice system. Um, and hopefully there, you know, are some answers, you know, uh, as soon as possible. Um, we would like to know what went wrong. We would like to know why, you know, he lost his life. We would like to know um, if this is, you know, a, a case that will be solved. Um, does anybody, you know, who was around him have an idea? Could it be one of his friends who, you know, might have a clue as to why this happened? Yes, really um, looking forward to, you know, answers too many into this. So let's take a break here as we try to reconnect with our guests to complete the story. Do stay with us. Yeah, welcome back. And we now have both our guests, Mr. Abdurrahman Balogu, Head of Media and Communications, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NIDCOM, and Mr. Tsunde Abudu, brother of the deceased. Uh, Mr. Balogu, Balogu, you were speaking earlier, telling us about the statistics of Nigerians that have been killed in South Africa and what NIDCOM has done about it over the years. Please, uh, you can continue with your thoughts. Right. Mr. Balogu. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, in, the pro in the process of our pressing for justice, some of the uh, uh, victims, we have been able to get justice for them. Uh, to the extent that the South African uh, authorities have prosecuted some of their police officers who are involved in this uh, uh, killings. Because some of the killings were actually perpetrated by the police officers. Uh, some Nigerians who just were arrested, and then in the process, they got killed. Um, so when the federal government got involved, uh, the prosecutor, some of the their men, and uh, things have been normalized until we hear this uh, Abuja case again. Okay, was there any compensation, or has there been any compensation for the families of these Nigerians that were murdered in South Africa? Uh, as far as I know, no compensation yet. All right. Um... No compensation yet. Okay, so. Um... Yes. Maybe you may like to bring in the South African uh, High Commissioner okay. to talk more about it. Okay, so Tunde Abudu, bringing you in now, um, we, we, know, we know Mr. Balogu has explained what has been done over the years regarding this case, or these cases of murders in South Africa. You know, probably the police, you know, who are complicit are arrested. But for your family in this situation, what would be justice for you? Yeah, justice um, will be to get the culprit apprehended. If we still, if, it, if we keep calling him an an unknown gunman, that means he's still out there in the society, waiting to kill another innocent Nigerian, foreigner, or even South African. We you know we can't bring back our dead brother, but justice will be to bring the so-called or non gunman to face the music. All right. All right. So yeah, we really right. hope that, uh, you know, like uh, Mr. Balogun has said, the South African police, the embassy, can work together to make sure that this killer is found and justice is served in this case. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Abdurrahman Balogu, for your time. And thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tunde Abudu, also for coming on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Pretty sad way to uh, wrap up the show program this morning. But, of course, uh, we need to have these conversations, and we hope that uh, truly uh, the truth can come out from the death of uh, Timmy Tokbe Abudu. And we wish the family the best, and we hope that uh, they find uh, um, some peace and some joy as quickly as possible.
That's uh, all we have for you this morning on yes. The Breakfast. It's a Thursday morning. It's the pre-weekend edition. Uh, of course, uh, we're looking forward to being here again tomorrow. But if you missed out on any of these conversations, um, quickly join us on social media at um, Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel, also at Plus TV Africa. Um, I am Usaogi Ogbonwa. And um, I am Anetta Felix, encouraging you to have a beautiful Thursday. Bye-bye.